Eclipse. So Eclipse is Amorphous's seventh studio album, and it was released back in 2006. Um, this took a bit longer than usual to make because in between Far From The Sun and this release, there was a change in vocalists. Pazi Kuskinen had left the band after the Far From The Sun tour and was replaced by a newcomer named uh, Tommy Yutsen, who had already been a longtime fan of the band. He um, claims that Tales From The Thousand Lakes is one of his favorite albums of all time. And uh, Into Hiding, I believe, is his favorite Amorphous song. Um, I looked up his uh, personal biography on the uh, Amorphous website, um, so uh, that's how I uh, figured that out. And it's thanks to uh, Tommy Yutsen's uh, fresh face to the band that they were able to uh, uh, basically revitalize themselves, uh, basically um, just uh, have a return to form after uh, Far From The Sun's failures. They were able to go uh, back into a much more refreshing blend of the clean styles of the Puzzy Koskinen days and uh, the gruff, uh, dirty uh, death metal style of the old days. And they're basically able to combine all those aspects together to make a very clean but very uh, hard pounding album at the same time. It has very good production, just like all the amorphous albums ever since, like Elegy, but mostly Twinella and um, they've just been continuing to go on and uh, yeah again this has very good production but they up the intensity on this album as compared to the uh, previous albums uh, this is basically uh, like I said before this is their return to a more metallic sound while still retaining the um, the softer elements of uh, what they were doing with Pazi Kuskinen. The artwork indeed is a very perfect metaphor for this revitalization of the band. Uh, you could just see the bright sun on there with uh, the, the reflection right there. It just is a very bright color and um, yeah you could definitely tell that this band um, has something going for us just by looking at the album cover. Uh, you can tell uh, something uh, lit up, so to speak, and um, yes, something certainly did. Uh, this is just, yeah. Um, let's go through the uh, track listing really quick and just look at these songs. Two Moons is the opening track of this album, and uh, art, and believe it or not, I think it's the weakest song in the album, but um, it turns out to be a very good start to this album, and uh, it's a clear indicator that they're going back to that a uh, heavier sound while also mixing in more of the modern day style. Um, just it, the uh, the songs on here, they, they just have a very unique blend. Um, it's very catchy, very unique. It's just like a melting pot of all the different and unique styles that they've done for the past several years. So that's just something that's very unique about this album overall. And Two Moons, I think, is the most standard uh, I don't want to say derivative, but just standard of the songs on here. But it's still a good song. I still like it a lot. Okay, the next song of the album is House of Sleep, the opening single of the album. Basically, everyone's first taste of what Tommy Yutsen would offer. And uh, this is a very awesome ballad. It reminds me a lot of what Sentenced was uh, doing like uh, before they broke up, releasing songs such as Fragile and No More Beating Is One. It definitely reminds me of songs like that, um, only it's not as like down and morose as Sentence. This song doesn't make you want to like kill yourself or anything like that. Yeah, it definitely has a bit more of a positive twinge as, as opposed to uh, the songs that Sentence were writing. It's just uh, some of the melodies are the same and um, uh, the structure-wise, it just feels the same, and they're both from Finland, so I guess that makes sense. There's a lot of more melodic metal coming out of Finland, so that makes sense. I'm wearing Winter Sun right now. But yeah, House of Sleep, very good song. Leaf Scar is track number three, and uh, this is a folky little song, and it, it definitely gives listeners their first taste of Tommy's just powerful growls. Um, he is like one of my favorite growlers of all time. I just love how he just uh, basically just like uh, 
stares right at you, just saying, Fate changed, life healed like a wound. How does the kind of life heal that leaves such a scar? I cover myself. I uncover myself. He's just staring right at you. He's just growling this as he's going and basically just telling it right to your face. I love how direct he is with his growling. And um, it's definitely just a very... <laughs> It's an awesome little song. It's a short one, but it still has a lot to offer. It has the flutes, the acoustic guitars, and it's just a pounding little number. It's very aggressive, and it just has. It's very diverse for how short it is. So, um, yeah, I think it's a really, really good one. Um, Born from Fire is the next song on here. Um, in a way, this also kind of reminds me of Sentenced. In a way, um, that's the thing. Uh, Sentenced amorphous yeah a lot of more melodic bands from Finland but I'm making the same point I did before but um, anyway yeah born from fire a uh, really good one I also really like it um, under a soil on black stone is um, um, I guess I could say one of the more progressive songs on the album it starts off slow with acoustic guitars and during the course it builds up like all heavy and stuff uh, later on, it goes into a bit more of like a mid-paced, sort of fast section. Um, you know, kind of like what you would hear with a song like Fade to Black or Children of the Damned or something. Uh, definitely not st oh, structure-wise, yeah, but not like rhythmic uh, theme or melody-wise. Just, um, you know, structure, like soft verse, heavy chorus, soft verse, heavy chorus and then it builds up into a much uh, heavier and faster section. Um, you know what I mean. One by Metallica, like a lot of Metallica songs, Remember Tomorrow and Children of the Damned by Iron Maiden, just structural wise, it kind of feels the same. And uh, what's unique about uh, this and the next two songs is that they're both interlocked with each other. Uh, Under Soil and Black Stone, Percolet, The God of Fire, and The Smoke both form like a sort of trilogy with one another. Uh, this is very unique. I haven't really heard this on uh, many amorphous albums before. In fact, I don't think I have. This is, um, well, oh, okay. Um, Sampo goes into um, Silver Bride on Skyforger, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, this is just um, very unique. Um, Percolé is like the only amorphous song I know of that doesn't really have like an actual beginning or an actual end. Um, the beginning of Percolé God of Fire is the end of Under a Soil and Black Stone, and the end of Percolé God of Fire is the smoke, or the beginning of the smoke. So it, that's just something that's very unique. And Percolé God of Fire, it's a brutal song. It's uh, definitely the most pounding, ugh, uh, most aggressive song on the album. This is where Tommy Yutsen really shows off his chops. You can notice that the bass sounds a lot more heavy. It just seems a lot more clear in the mix. I mean, it's already been very clear in the mix, but I mean, this is where, this is like um, the uh, heavy instrumentation. This is where it really shines forth. Uh, this is where yeah, Amorphous has no time to bullshit. They're ready to kick your fucking ass with this one. This is just a powerful song. And then um, at the very end of this, you hear the dun 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 like the very end of Percolate the God of Fire, and that goes into one of my all-time favorite Amorphous songs, The Smoke. This is also one of Amorphous's lead singles, I believe. I think um Instead of the music video that they had for uh, House of Sleep, I think this is like a, a live performance, or not a live performance, but um, they play the studio song, but with uh, live footage in the background. Um, but yeah, I love this song. It's, it's catchy as hell. It's definitely just a really awesome song. I love how they mix in the acoustic guitars. The chorus is addicting. This entire song is addicting from front to back. It just it blossoms with catchiness and just a lot of great hooks. Um, a funny memory about this, as I was driving by, um, I think I was sitting at a stoplight and I was singing this song like crazy and um, 
I guess I uh, sang the song higher than it was really supposed to. I was at a stoplight and I accidentally left my windows down and I heard uh, the guy next to me going a woo-hoo after I uh, made that note and um, uh, that is just, that's probably the most embarrassing uh, moment that has ever happened to me really. Um, I was just singing this song, having a good time, and not real. I mean, I knew I was singing badly, but um, I was just having a good time, and then some heckler, some fucker, like, in the car next to me, um, I could just hear him going, woo! And uh, that makes me cringe to this day, just thinking about it. But um, that doesn't change how I feel about this song. This song is excellent. Uh, even if that moment was probably the most embarrassing moment I ever had in my life, and I never like to think about that. Um, the song itself, just excellent, excellent, fantastic. I, I love the song to death. I never get tired of it. Just fantastic. Um, next, we move on to Same Flesh, which is um, it's definitely um, a bit more folky in, uh, in structure-wise. I mean, you don't hear, like, flutes or anything like that, but um, just structure-wise, just musically, it just feels like a bit more dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. It just has that sort of folky vibe to it, and uh, yeah, I like the song also. It's also a very, very good one. I really don't have a lot of bad things to say about this album. This is one of my favorite Amorphous releases, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't sound as enthusiastic about the songs right now because um, my throat is feeling a bit tired and I, I wasn't really in the mood of making it, but, you know, I kind of have to charge through this discography series since uh, the Circle album's coming out in like a couple of days, so I really need to get to that. But, uh, yeah, Same Flesh, very strong song. I love the chorus. The verses are very strong. It just, yeah, it's a very, very good song. Brother Moon is one of my absolute favorite songs on this album. Um, this is even more folky. You got acoustic guitars. You got um, some great, great lyrics. Uh, Tony, I mean Tommy, sounds amazing. Um, yeah, this it's a really awesome folky little song. I really, really like it. Um, I I don't have much to say. It's just an awesome song. And uh, the last song of the album is Empty Opening. This is an epic, epic closer. Um, I can't help but uh, sing it in my car. Like, whenever I'm driving, I'm listening to this album. I always am pumped up when I hear the very soft intro in the, in the introduction. It kind of just uh, fades off from uh, Brother Moon into this sort of ambient-ish sort of intro. And uh, then it uh, goes in with that dun 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 sort of riff. It just seems like a very unique song. It's a very driving, very pounding song. I I love the just that sort of mid-paced feel to it. I really really like the lyrics. It's a very it paints a really awesome picture, the lyrics in this song, and uh, Tommy sounds great. Um, he sounds spectacular here. And, um, yeah, it's one of my favorite choruses on the album, and, and some of my favorite verses here. Just some of my favorite melodic lines are um, in this song here, which is a fantastic thing. Um, overall, I'm going to have to probably give this a 9.25 out of 10. This is a very strong album, and it's a very powerful return to form for this band. <laughs> if you thought that um, they were sort of drifting far from the sun earlier, they have come back to the light with Eclipse. Awesome album. One of my favorite Amorphous releases ever. It's probably my second favorite Amorphous album, or maybe even my first. Um, but... Um, We'll see what the next couple are. Stay tuned for Silent Waters.